Do you need me to start again? Nope. Good. Um, we'll just start with the... Today we're going to talk to bloggers in the media. It's lots of common sense stuff, but sometimes common sense isn't all that common. So over the next 45 minutes or so, we're going to uh, go through some slides that will unveil the secrets of the world and the universe, how to make money and get apps, get lots of downloads for your apps. Um, you know, on the topic today, on the agenda today, why you should engage with guys like us. Um, some of the differences between sort of the types of media out there, uh, best practices and things you should absolutely not do. And then obviously my background, you know, my last five or six years has been running crackberry.com, which is a big Blackberry website. Uh, so I have kind of my perspective on, you know, the life cycle of, of an app and, and all the little opportunities along the way to get, you know, free promotion for it and that kind of thing. So we'll go through that. And um, dealing with social media. How you get featured on App World and oh no, that, not that one. Sorry, that one's like a very closely guarded secret. We don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. Uh, so starting off at the start, right? Why you should engage with guys like us, Victoria. The first one's yours. The first one's mine. Yeah, it is. Uh, so we have. Uh, so really quickly before I even get into that, a little bit of background. I head up the uh, developer and applications PR team and social team at Research in Motion. Uh, prior to Research in Motion, I was a tech journalist with Computer World for several years, and prior to that, did news reporting in Toronto. So, um, so now we'll move into this. Uh, don't <laughs> leave it to fate, and my saying is be your champion. You know, no one, no one else is necessarily going to champion for you. You really do have to be your champion. Uh, in every space that you're in, with everyone you want to talk to, don't wait for people to find you and don't wait for them to come to you. They may cover it, they may see it, they may cover it, but you have to be your champion. You have to be your stories champion as well. And that's really where I was going with that. Cool. Uh, you got to be proactive, right? The big, the big thing is people are going to be talking about you whether you know it or not. Uh, so if you're not out there taking the lead on the conversation and knowing when it's happening, you're just missing opportunities. Um, and I think the big realization that a lot of developers I've talked to miss is that you know, your apps aren't just apps for people to download on, on, on their phones, on their tablets. I mean, they are from your perspective, right? That's, that's what you're after. But for guys like us in the media, you're our story. You're our content. I mean, we, we want to be hammering out blog posts and things like that all day long. And uh, you're the material we want to be writing about. So, so when you talk to us and build those relationships and everything else, it makes our job easier. And you're helping us do our job. So it's really critical. Uh, the other thing too is not, you know, people are doing this, right? So if you're not doing your best efforts to engage with the media, engage with the enthusiast communities out there, and your competitors are, uh, you know, don't be surprised if they're getting more downloads than you and that kind of thing, or they, you feel like they have more loyal users, or you feel like they're getting more blog posts on other sites and that kind of thing. Uh, if you're not doing anything about it, it's not just going to happen. So like Victoria said, you got to be your champion. Don't leave it to fate. Um, And I think the word ripple effect there is a big one because that's, that's the benefit of getting free publicity is, you know, let's say we do a story on your app on Crackberry. Okay, the moment we blog it, your sales and downloads go up that day. Um, we've done posts before for developers where their apps are, have been available for weeks or months, and they've been doing okay, but then that post is what kind of puts it on the radar out there. And, you know, that day you do well, but all your statistics build from that. So if you have a great day of sales in App World all of a sudden, 
you know, those statistics help you climb up the top downloads list and everything else, and that helps you on and on and on. So every burst of pub publicity you get, you know, gives you a surge, but it continues to ripple for a long time after that. And it's not just in downloads, it's things like, um, you know, building Google PageRank on the web. You know, people put their sites on the web. Every time you get a link back to your site, it's helping you establish your credibility with the search engines, get more ongoing traffic. Um, your name is out there, so you get more recognition. You know, instead of uh, just being kind of, you know, a random developer, if you get a, a good cycle of publicity going, you just become a name that everybody knows. And there's a lot of BlackBerry developers out there who've achieved that, right? Where everybody just kind of knows who they are. So you can have thousands of developers on a platform. But then there's this handful that, you know, they're not huge companies, but they're just these guys who have done an amazing job of, of being out there consistently, backing it up with some good apps, and now everybody knows who they are. And, and that should be, to me, everybody's goal, whether an independent developer or a big house. And, uh, you know, again, as you get more coverage, it just builds your ongoing trust and credibility. And we talked a little bit about leveraging RIM. Well, yeah, so I'll talk a little bit more about that. But um, so, so obviously, uh, RIM, BlackBerry, our social channels and our public relations team. We're trying to tell a story of app momentum and developer momentum, that's very clear. We need your help to do that. We also want to help you tell your story, but again, be your champion. We're not going to be able to just discover everyone's story. And, and again, you know, you may, you may create content, you may, you may be doing that, you know, content creation as you're trying to influence and you've created a video that's, that's amazing, and you've maybe even hashtagged at BlackBerry 10 in hopes that we'll discover it. It would be far better to just come and tell us, we'll start tweeting it out. We want that content too, right? We are an influencer too, and so we want that content. And, uh, and, and we want to shout from the rooftops about what you're doing, and I, this is not obviously altruistic at all, right? Like, this helps me immensely. So, but, it, but it's that kind of symbiotic relationship that we can have with that. But again, we won't, we won't all, I would say 95% of the time, we won't discover your story. You have to bring it to us. And today, you'll be getting the contact names, and you'll be understanding a little bit more how to come to us with that story. And I think on that point, it's, it's the scope, right? I mean, RIM has massive reach through their Facebook pages, their Twitter, you know, everything else. Uh, you know, our sites with, uh, with CrackBerry and our Mobile Nations Network, we're not talking small sites. We're talking, you know, eight and a half million people a month, 50 million page views, that kind of thing. So the, the effects are substantial. I mean, even with CrackBerry, there's, there's often been the CrackBerry effect days where, you know, we blog it and people's servers go down or they, they just have massive spikes. You know, same thing with getting featured on AppWorld, right? It's massive spikes when promotion is there. Um, so, I mean, it's one of those things sticking on the why you should do it. it. You'd be crazy not to do it, is the bottom line. Is that mean to say I can't say that? <laughs> Did I stop you? You kind of laugh. You're like, you can't call people crazy. It was funny. Um, <laughs> engaging with the media. So, to me, this is one of the most important slides uh, of the day. And it's something people don't really think about that often. So, when you think about it, it'll make a lot of sense. So, when, typically, when you think of the media, uh, the little image on the right, is kind of traditional media. So if you think Wall Street Journal, New York Times, your average you know, tech site online, you're in gadgets and verges and that kind of thing, typically your, your media company, your news site, is really sitting outside where the action is. Uh, and they're reporting to their audience. So you know, in this case, you have your BlackBerry ecosystem where you have you know, RIM making Blackberries, you got your carriers, you got your BlackBerry owners and everybody else. There's news there, there's app coverage there, and that's all happening here. And then your media company's here, kind of looking in, they're talking about it, maybe, but they're reporting to these people over here. And they don't necessarily care what they're reporting on as long as they're keeping their readers happy. The difference with community sites and, and sort of niche media, so you know, there's a lot of BlackBerry sites out there, right? There's CrackBerry, there's Berry Review, there's BlackBerry OS, there's N for BB and all these guys. You know, in the BlackBerry space, we're not on the sidelines. We're in it. I mean, we're tied to RIM's success. We're, we want BlackBerry owners to be happy. We want BlackBerry to de developers to make lots of money, get be successful. We want everybody in our ecosystem to be there being successful. So it's very different um, the extent the content will do. So traditional media, you know, they're going to talk about the success stories. You know, you're, you have a big awesome app that launches. Maybe they'll cover that and that sort of thing. Uh, you get 20 million downloads and you send in a press release and that, maybe you get picked up on that too. They'll, they'll talk about the big highlights. Uh, but they're not necessarily as loyal, they're not necessarily in the business of taking the time to build relationships. 
But with community sites, you know, we're very focused, right? Crackberry's only focused on Blackberry. So on a day like yesterday when there's tons of RIM news, you know, we're doing 20 or 25 blog posts, but your traditional media is doing two or three, right? We just go that much more deeper. And on the days when there isn't, you know, BB Jam or Blackberry World, you know, we still want to publish 20, 30 stories. So that's you guys. So we cover a lot of stuff in the, in the cycle that, that other people won't. Um, and the opportunities really vary uh, in the mix here. So, so for us, it's, uh, it's a different approach, right? You're talking to bloggers. It's very personable. It's very much, um, here, I want to come up here for a second. My <laughs> neck's getting sore back there. It, it's very much, you can be yourself. We don't, want, we don't need to deal with you know, the CEOs of companies and set up interviews and that. You just need to help us help you basically get the word out. Uh, and we'll cover things in, in, in depth. Uh, if you're dealing with big media entities, it's a different approach, right? They want to set things up more formally, set up more meetings and that kind of thing. Uh, but you got to be careful what you say. So my, my hater's going to hate here. This, be, this is where the, the lack of common sense comes in. So we're a BlackBerry site. You know, I don't need somebody to send me their iOS press release. And it still happens to this day. Like, people don't do any sort of research or homework. Or uh, people pitch me stories to write about really stupid things that I'm not going to ever write about. So a few times we've had to call people out and <laughs> very publicly, and you know, they've received thousands of emails making sure they don't do it again. So Now, that, that <laughs> said, right, like, there, you know, obviously, um, with BlackBerry 10 and, and Playbook, uh, there's opportunities as Android developers um, and BlackBerry developers. And so with this, if you're looking at the, mobile, the Smartphone Experts Mobile Nations group, then you, um, you, you, have, you, you have to niche your stories to them. But with one app that you're building or one thing that you're doing, you have more than one story to tell. If you ported an Android app, that might end up being a story that Android Central's you know, interested in sure. as well as CrackBerry. So there are times when... But it's tailoring. It's, it's make, it is knowing the audience of the site, tailoring the pitch, and understanding the media contact that you're putting that pitch to and what's going to really stand out to them. Yeah, doing your homework. Um, this is me. This is you. Yeah, yeah so um, again, you know, Kevin mentioned at the very start, a lot of this is common sense. I'm not, you know, we're, we're probably not telling you too much that's new. But uh, the media landscape, obviously, over the last 10 years changed dramatically, and it's shifting. We're seeing some, some new shifts again. Um, you know, we went from a very print uh, culture to the online culture, and, and at that point, news started being about quick hit news, about getting a lot of content up there, a lot of posts, about getting a lot of hits and page views and things like that. And what media then started to require from, from you as you're trying to tell your story and from us is that kind of quick hit, how can you get them the news, get it, let them get it out there first, tell the story quickly. And I, we, we talk about stories on a plate um, where you're taking the different elements of your story. You're knowing what your headline's going to be, what, what you would really like to see as your, the headline as you, as you pitch that story. You're providing all the elements of the story, and you're not promising anything you can't deliver. But you're almost trying to get it in there and give them the story without, with barely any work on their part to actually get something up and content up quickly. What we're seeing now with a lot of different site, uh, a lot of sites is uh, we're seeing uh, kind of a, a circle around to more analytical articles. What, and those require something different of you, right? So that's something where you're really going to rely, and Kevin's going to go into this a little bit more in terms of relationship building, but you're going to rely on that relationship to, to, so that you're, you're contacting your key media regularly, finding out what's your editorial calendar like? You know, what are you working on? What's, what's, what's in the can right now for you? And, um, you know, we have this stuff upcoming. And, you know, tell me about, you're doing something on NFC? Who can I set you up from RIM? Because we've got some NFC stuff. We have an expert on this who's had years in the industry outside of RIM. Let's talk about that. Let's get me inserted into that story somehow. It may not be my full RIM or BlackBerry NFC story, and yet it's showing the thought leadership that I need to get out there. So know what you need but work on those analytical pieces. And I think with a lot of the online, um, larger online sites, you're going to see more and more of those analytical articles coming back in and the, the analysis pieces. And the only way to really get those, media will come to you, they will reach out to you, but again, it's championing, understanding the opportunities that might be there, finding them, and trying to insert yourself into them. Because, uh, ag again, they, they won't always just discover you.
absolutely. And this, this is a perfect follow-up to that. <laughs> you know, in general, one thing I've learned over the years is that bloggers are very lazy. Um, and not only are they lazy, they somehow manage to be always kind of busy. Bloggers by nature like to talk. That's why they're typically blogging their opinions. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. thanks for that. <laughs> Uh, but we like, we like getting our work done though, right? We like being, uh, posting stories and, and everybody likes first and exclusive because that's in the media. I mean, even for RIM, right? You want to be the first to get your, uh, your stories out there. And we'll talk about what that means a bit more in a bit. Um, but the bottom line is the easier you make it on the media, on the bloggers, the better your chances of getting coverage. If you make it really hard on us, you're creating more work when we're already busy and then it makes it that much harder. So your goal, as a developer, when you're doing your outreach, and this isn't just our site, this is kind of everybody out there, is to make it so darn easy for them that they would be crazy not to post that story about you. Whether it's an announcement or, or you know, even a review, providing the assets and everything they need to work with. Um, we talked a little bit about you know, doing your homework first and, and some specific deal, uh, points there. You know, every site's different. There's no total standard. Um, so really what it comes down to is you need to do your research as to who you want to work with and look at how they want you to work with, with you. Um, so for example, on Crackberry, you know, we prefer, you know, if you go to our contact page, there's a list of email addresses to email, email the right people. You know, read the site, actually see who publishes stories daily, who does the app reviews and the app announcements, personalize your emails and that kind of thing. Um, getting involved in the forums. You know, forums are a great place to engage with users, but every forum out there, whether it's an XDA developers or, or any of our sites or any of the other ones, everybody's got different rules and policies. You know, for some sites, you can come in and post about your app and they're gonna ban you because you're self-promoting. Uh, so you need to know that. You need to know what you can do and not do. Um, I'm not gonna put the summary of that into this presentation because that's your homework and I want, you know, the guys who put the most homework in to make the most money and get the best relationships. But, but it's something to be very aware of. Uh, other sites too, you know, it's, hey, if you want your app re reviewed, you know, give us this, upload your screen caps and that sort of thing. Follow the instructions, you know, look at what the stories that are getting posted, what they look like, how they're formatted, and that's what you wanna do uh, with people. And then going back to that last slide of, you know, bloggers wanting to, to feel important, do some social stalking. I mean, all these, everybody in the media, you can find Barry Vick on Twitter here and Adder, and, um, Thank you you know, build these relationships. <laughs> uh, because then when you reach out, you know, there's a face to the name, there's a relationship to the name, and, and that'll help. Um, so when it comes to building relationships, I think it's important to clarify that. You know, it's not that we need to go out for drinks tonight, although we could, uh, but then I'll, we'll drink too much and I won't remember tomorrow. It's really that relationships build a lot over time. And it's, it's a business relationship, right? You're developers, we're media, you guys have to work hard and spend your time building apps. We need to work hard running our sites. So it's really about just the right amount of communication, the right form of communication at the right times, and uh, being a little tactful. You know, I've definitely run into a lot of, you know, surprisingly a lot of like tactless things that have happened over the years. And you can screw up a relationship in an instant. You know, there's guys who, they, they, they try too hard to build a relationship, right? And it's, you know, there's lots of people here. We want to talk to everybody. We can't talk to everybody for too long. Uh, a couple of years back, I was talking to a bunch of RIM people and a developer walked up to me and he, he handed me a brown bag of cash with like five grand cash in it, which he was doing just to get my attention. It was really funny. I didn't get to keep the cash. But it was just a weird, awkward thing to do when I was talking to like senior RIM What people. a clever ploy. It was like, what, what the hell's happening here, you know? And it was, in his head, it was a clever idea, but I was like, I don't know what you're doing, right? This is crazy. <laughs> and to this day, I mean, I'm, here I'm using him as an example in a presentation on what not to do. So, you know, it was really bad. Uh, also, when it comes to communication, you know, social's good, but you can't always rely on stuff. Again, there's so much information out there that, you know, sometimes people will send me on Twitter, a developer will say, hey, can you check out my app and do it? And I get lots of tweets and then I just miss it, right? But, you know, do your homework, see who to contact on the site, see the other writers on the site, and, uh, and, and you know, work at that. Because you can't get mad if I miss something, and sometimes people do, it's, it's gonna happen. Like my like, briefing on Monday, like I, I didn't get the email. <laughs> um, and again, you know, personalize messages, right? So even if it's a generic contact form on a website you're contacting, you know, figure out who runs the site, that kind of thing, who are the writers, and put, put the names into it. You know, if you're reaching out to somebody for the first time, and you're just like, here's my app, here's my screen cap, can you review it, or, or that kind of thing, 
it's like it's easy for the person to say yes or no. But if they they get you know they say they call you out by name, it's just a little different, right? It's it's the extra little touches that uh, show you care, and that goes a long way. And uh, please don't phone. I'm contradicting this. So okay, so for, for <laughs> bloggers, for bloggers, I would say please don't phone because it's always at a bad time without fail. Um, we, you know, we're BlackBerry people who like a lot of email and stuff. So, so I'm good with that, but that's the blogger side of things. Take it, Victoria. Not even. So no, I, what, what I would say is, please don't phone, don't phone to pitch your story. Pitch your story on email. You know, pitch your story on a submission form or whatever the, the case may be. But once again, in terms of relationship building, there's gonna be a blogger or a site and, and you know, it, it might not be Kevin, it might not be Adam, it might not be Chris or Michelle, but there's someone, right, um, on a certain site that you just connect with. I would say you want to reach out by phone sure. once every couple of weeks. You guys want to be on the phone. We can do some, there's some idea sharing there. There's, you know, how come AT&T doesn't have the bold, well, I'd ask AT&T, Kevin, or write a blog sure. post yeah, about no, it. We'll okay. reach out. Yeah. Right. So, it's, it, you know what I mean? Like, it, that happened because of a phone call, that post. Sure. And so, the, I, do, I, I, I do think that as you're trying to build those slightly more intimate relationships with your, the, the people that you're really connecting with in terms of media influencers, go ahead and phone. Okay. <laughs> See, this, this presentation's in beta, so we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll fix that for the gold release. Um, and one other thing I put on here, uh, oh, don't send novels. So people are excited, like developers get excited about their apps and everything else, but if you send like a wall of text that's 1,500 words, it's just too much to take in. You want it to be a glanceable post, break out your highlights and bullet points, like, you know, read the blog posts that get published and you almost want to half do that work because it, it makes things, I, this is something I learned because I'm classic for sending a wall of text email to everybody I work with. Uh, but what I learned is, you know, you don't read it. If you can read it in like 20 seconds, you'll actually read it and take action right then. If I open an email and it's this long, um, I just, you know, leave it to come back to and then it, and I never come back to it because the emails never stop. So it's a good tip. And uh, we already talked about sort of understanding the site's posting habits and services. But I think one thing to realize is that, you know, just because you reach out, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to get posted. I mean, there's... we. I mean, that, that, the volume of apps these days is different than it was a few years ago, and it's hard to hit everything. So, you know, we need to triage a little bit what's happening, and, that, and that's honestly where the value of relationships does come in, because as we build good relationships, it's, you know, it, it's just easier for us to, okay, yeah, we'll get that in there. Uh, and also the apps you're doing, you know, exciting apps that are awesome, we want to totally blog about no matter what. And if it's, um, you know, the 10th app of something that's already been, you know, a 10th flashlight app, and there's already a lot of bunch, um, no offense to flashlight apps, I love flashlight apps, but if it's the 10th one and I already have five, um, it's less exciting for us to blog about. So that's uh Oh that's wait, can you go, go with it. That's all right. Um, and at the bottom, you, you were saying that's why relationships do matter as does going above and beyond to turn an announcement into something more. Mm. And that's part of, so my little, my three tenants are like so far three, there might be more, <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. Um, but we have, be your champion, you are an influencer, and know your story. And so when you're, when you're doing this and you want to turn your announcement into something more, if you know your story, you understand your differentiators, what makes what you've done special, and that key element, you know, something that you did, you know, whether something that you did in, it, it could be as deep as the code, but it's something that you did in the user experience, probably more likely, that, that is that little bit, just that little bit different know to highlight that, know your story, and again, use your influencer content so that you have your headline in your head, and, and that, turns you, that turns your pitch into something more. And again, it's that giving him the story. Agreed. So now an example of a great relationship. So there's a few developers over the years who, I mean, it wasn't me trying to build a relationship with them, it's just in retrospect, I searched my inbox for their name, and I was like, holy crap, look at all these emails we've had over the years. And this is, I didn't even update this since last year. There's even more. Um, but I mean, if you look at this, I know it's small. It's just, uh, this is Enrique from uh, Bellshare, who to me is a gold standard developer in terms of how he works with us. He, he reaches out when he's got something to tell us. He gives us an email that is uh, very well laid out. It's short and glanceable. 
It has attachments for creative we can use that aren't just a screen capture, but they're actually nice looking, better than I could Photoshop. I don't know how to twist the phone to do that. Uh, he gives us videos which we may or may not use, but he does the work for us, and he makes it easy. Um, and if you go back, you can sort of see some of the life cycle stuff. It's, you know, here's an announcement, here's an update, here's a sale, here's a contest. Yeah, it's newsy. To. It's newsy. He, he's realized what we do on a regular basis, and he doesn't miss a single opportunity to promote his app. So when I think, I actually think I saw a RIM tweet, a retweet on him the other day about the number of apps he got yeah. downloaded. So there's, he builds great apps, but he absolutely follows through and doesn't miss one single opportunity to promote his applications through guys like us. And we're only one example of the people he's working with. He's doing that across the board. Um, you know, last sort of thing here, last couple slides on building relationships. So, you know, beyond bloggers in the media, get to know RIM people. Hi. And you're at a place <laughs> like Blackberry Jam right now. Yeah. Take advantage of it. Talk to everybody. I mean, there's people, I mean, even last night's party, I hope people were there. There's lots of RIM people around. And um, you want to get to know everybody you can, I think, is uh, important. Yep. Um, other places to find influencers in mobile, too. So, you know, there's the bloggers. What are you laughing at? Oh, I, I was going to, I will talk to that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I skipped over the big one? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so um, and again, actually, at the social desk, um, Alex Kinsella heads the social program on my team for developer and applications, and he is an, an if, if you haven't already met Alex, um, he's a great, uh, a great person to know at RIM. Someone who is eager, again, he, he has to fill his channels with content as well, and he's eager to get to know people. He's also an app hound, so who, um, and you know, Build and Taco Quest, which is very important for everyone who knows about that one. Um, now, App World featured, obviously, um, being featured on the carousel in App World, it gives uh, most apps a bump. So, actually, when you're talking about RIM people, getting to know people, at almost every event we do, there'll be an App World booth. Get to know the App World people. Because, again, it's that personal connection, the relationship. There are other elements that go into the matrix of what would you know? What apps would be featured, or what apps w would not be featured, and things like that. But at least having that connection with an app world person, they'll be able to tell you what to do. They'll be able to help guide you a little bit on what needs to happen. You know, with your app, if there's a certain element you should be using in it that makes it stand out to them and makes it become a, a feature candidate. And just keep in mind that I have some really good relationships with Rim people, and I've never seen the Crackberry app featured on the carousel yet. So. Um. There's no guarantee, but maybe, maybe next week. I don't, I don't know. Sorry, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> uh, no, and, and finding other influencers. You know, obviously, get, go out there, right? Twitter. You can sort by categories. Go onto things like Clout, and you can find who all the uh, the people of prominence are out there. And, and honestly, the, people like that. There's lots in the BlackBerry community where you know they have 5,000, 10,000 Twitter followers. You hit them up. You offer them some free apps to download. You just made a best friend because they'll take it, they'll download it, they'll retweet you, and you just built a cha like a champion for you, just because you reached out with a little bit of uh, a bit of love. It's it's very reciprocal that way. Um, so again, don't leave any opportunities on the table. Reach out to people. We're in such a socially connected uh, world now that it's crazy not to. And I think we've covered lots of this, but maybe not. Some. I have I have covered a lot of it. But again, um, come to us and tell us what you're doing, what you've done. Um, if you have ideas on what you'd like to see, you know, how you'd like to work with RIM in promoting your apps and publicizing and working with media, we want to know that too. That's a, we can't always do it, but a lot of times we can. Um, you know, we do uh, regular pitching to a pretty broad base of media um, that, flow, that f goes between consumer tech, um, trade pubs, bloggers and news and even to the wires, they're, they're all on our regular contact list. So we do pitches to them at least twice a month and it'll be roundups. You know, we'll theme it into like some kind of story. Maybe it's, you know, summer travel and, or, or we'll go to, um, uh, when you're looking at working, if you're doing a consumer-based app and it's something that leads into a consumer publication, something like a Vogue or a Cosmopolitan, they have very, they're, they're what we call long lead publications. So you need to start working with, if you have something that's going to be relevant for the holiday season and you want to launch it and you're thinking, I can do this if I work with them properly, you need to reach out in about June 
to get into their holiday buying guides because those come out, they go to print in um, late August, early September for almost all of those kind of consumer, high-end consumer print. Um, and so, so there's certain things like that. And if you're coming to us and you have these ideas, those are the kind of things that we know and we can, we can at least give you those tips and possible, and, and, and in a lot of cases, we can introduce you to some of the, um, the desk editors for, for those publications. Um, we, and as I said, we do these pitches and we want to include apps in, in the pitches and we want to point to the right kind of apps. We want to have the imagery from you, and Kevin mentioned that as well. And that's very important to most stories, who, to most outlets that need to get the story up quickly. To have that imagery, that probably raises you above in, in the pile from a lot of other people if you have it there. Um, and so few people do, don't do it. Like, I know. They take advantage, and I get mad. I'm like, it's so easy, guys. Just I used to be the, the editor in. for the product section for yeah. Computer World, and, and that was my big thing back to um, PR. Give me images. Um, so, <laughs> um, so, so there is an opportunity to come to us and work with us on those pitches. We do media notes, updating them. If there's like, you know, we'll do like we, we do developer momentum releases and app momentum releases, and we're looking for testimonials. We want to work with people to highlight what they're doing in those. Those are great opportunities as well. And once we know you, we have you in, you know, I kind of have you in, in, in my address book. But um, again, it's coming and telling you who you are, what you've been doing, and so, so that I know to reach out to you too. Um, there are sometimes opportunities in um, press releases, like I said, the testimonials and things like that. There's also opportunities to do, uh, we, we are actually not doing as many press releases as we used to, as we find the one-to-one -one direct, one-to-one -one contact of like media notes and, and just one-to-one -one communication, um, as long as it's to a broad list, uh, works almost as well, um, or in some cases better, because obviously that one-to-one -one touch is gonna get you more notice. Um, but if your app is exclusive to BlackBerry, if your app is, um, it, it, you're, you're launching it first on BlackBerry, those things do, those things do matter to RIM um, in terms of if you want a quote in your press release or things like that, those matter to us. And those are elements that we require for a lot of it when we're asked to contribute quotes. Um, those are some of the first questions you'll get asked by my team. Yeah, it makes sense, right? Yep. Just think about what the motives of the people you're contacting are. You know, Rim Rim has some stories, storylines they're working on right now. So yep. appeal to those, and it's going to go a long way. And almost every event we go to for media, for instance, if you're at like one of the larger events, CES or Mobile World Congress, there's often a media event associated with those larger events. It's a it's a simple it's PR at tables interacting with media and analysts. We are always looking for what apps are we going to put on the devices that are at our table. What are we going to talk to the media and analysts about as they come to us for that? Um, and then there's other opportunities where we sometimes do app events. And um, you know, we'll have a kind of a, it, it, there might be like a San Fran and New York and Toronto uh, that we do three events to showcase applications with some of our teams. And if we know you guys are there and you have something, that's, a, that's another opportunity for us to work together. And uh, oh, and so and then on the whole other side, we have our social channels. Um, you know, we're we're pretty content hungry too on uh, Dev Blog, and um, we actually have the Inside BlackBerry blog has a few different blogs, and there's opportunities across more than one of those. We have an enterprise blog. If you're building enterprise apps, Biz Blog would love to know you. Uh, dev blog, you know, we're talking a little bit more about what you we talk a little bit more about, you know, what you do with the, with the tools and, and how that translates into app, but we do have Inside Blackberry, which is our consumer blog and also one that we like to cover applications on. Uh, and then we have help blog and you're probably not going on that. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> um, and then there's, there are other opportunities. If you've posted something, it's something, you know, we're getting more and more into cross posting finally. So, sure. um, that's something where, where we're able to do that. We're able to look at what you're doing. You've come to us, let us know that you've done this. Sorry. Let us know that you've done this. Let you know you have a video, you have a blog that you've done. You want that cross posted. Maybe there's opportunities to do guest blogs on our blog, videos with um, Alex and the, and the Dev Evangelist crew. Um, we're, we're always looking for that kind of content. And I'm always keen on people coming to me and talking about, you know, yeah, I'll retweet it. Like, you launched an app, I'll retweet it, but what else can we do? Like, talk to me about what else we can be doing around that. Like, you know, you launch an app and that's great and we'll retweet it, but shouldn't there be a follow-up that we do about, um, you know, Oh, you know, great gaming experience. You you should see it. It you know whatever the gorgeous the gorgeous UI that did this thing or what whatever the case may be. Or I have an in-app purchase. Have you reached this level yet? Because you can do this. Have have a have a Twitter campaign. Like have have an idea of 
more than one tweet. It's more than a launch, right? This is your business. So, and then uh, Facebook again. We have we have um, really high, um, highly popular Facebook pages, and and we look for, to publish content on there as well. And I'm, I've got my eye on Kevin O'Neill. I'm just going to spotlight Kevin for a second, who's from Edelman, um, which is our social agency team um, at RIM. And uh, Kevin is um, very much a uh, high level of expertise in social communications and social promotion. And so I'm just, I'm right, right? So <laughs> we're, uh, <laughs> so yeah, so again, come to us. Come to us. And I'll attest, over the last year and a half, you guys have been so much better at uh doing all this stuff, right? It's been great. It's been really a great good. year. Good to see. OK, so now I can hustle through the opportunities in the app life cycle. So this is sort of your from I, app idea to you know 10 updates later, where I look at it and think you can get a lot of free publicity, free coverage. Or you know, if you want to pay us money, we'd probably take it. But we've never done that to date. Um, <laughs> so here's what the app cycle looks like. So you have an idea for an app. You need to build your app. That's the really hard part that I'm not smart enough to do. Uh, then you have a great app. It's time to announce it. You're going to have to do updates. You want to get reviews. You're going to get feedback and more ideas of things you can build in. So you're going to be developing in there. You want to promote it to make more money and then do more updates and review. And it's an ongoing circle. Um, and all the way through, there's ways to engage with enthusiast communities like CrackBerry and, and others out there. And you know, not just BlackBerry, but across all platforms, right? There's, there's a huge amount of uh, enthusiast users in the world. And I've seen a couple of developers, again, crack this code years ago. And that's where I learned this app life cycle. And it was more like they gamed me. They just took advantage of us completely without us knowing it. But then it worked out really well for them. They've all made lots of money. And then in the, in the end, I was like, oh, hey, what did they do? And this is what they did. So um, you know, number one, idea phase. So not all apps are created equal. You need to set your expectations before you actually launch an app, right? If you're launching a, a Me Too app that's been done a lot of times before, but you just want to do it because you, for whatever reason, you know, don't expect that it's going to get a ton of coverage out there and a ton of pickup. If you have something exciting and original, it's going to get a lot of pickup. If you build something that's really specific to the platform, it's going to get a lot of pickup. So you know, setting your, um, your expectations is, is really important, because uh, there's only so much. And I think at the same time, you have to approach app development as a developer, building your reputation. Or you know, I think I said che cheesily, apputation. Um, because we find that developers who build a, a good reputation on one app, you know, when they launch their next app, they have this following that it just follows them. And it's like, yeah, that's a great developer. And all of a sudden, all your apps get five-star reviews because you built up literally your own little community of followers who think you're an awesome person. Uh, at the same time, we've seen developers over the years do some things that tick off users. They kind of ruin their reputation. And you know, for us, we don't even want to blog their apps anymore because I know if we do a post on it, it's going to just have 50 comments saying, why did you even blog this? Uh, truth, right? Uh, so before you pick your app idea, just kind of know what you're getting into and uh, set those expe expectations. So some of the things where we've seen uh, the most success and biggest backlash, um, you know, on the BlackBerry OS in the past, we always saw a lot of apps that sort of improve the user experience um, do really well. Apps that bring popular online services to BlackBerry are always going to do well. Apps that are built specifically for BlackBerry will always do well. Uh, a great example there is Nintai, which you know came out a long time ago. But that was sort of a BlackBerry game, um, you know, flipping a block around. But it was built for like the BlackBerry trackball, and it was done so well, you know, that app immediately just went number one everywhere for sales. Because if you're a BlackBerry owner, you had to have that app. It was, it was the new brick breaker at the time, right? It just everybody got it, uh, and anybody could have built that app who was in this room. It wasn't that much of a crazy idea. It was just building for BlackBerry specifically. You could have. You could have. I, no, I said I couldn't. I could have. Well, <laughs> okay. And um, you know, also we've seen, um, you know, if there's apps on other platforms, ideas that aren't on BlackBerry yet, doing something that's similar will do well. So I mean, a good example here was Angry Farm, which you know, before Angry Birds came to BlackBerry, Angry Farm came out, and they got lots of downloads. Oh, so many. Retired on a beach Fantastic. right now. Not quite. Not but quite, but close. Certainly, um, that's their that's their business. They 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 built more than they built an entire business on it. So Great. just and just looking again, anybody in the room, right? You can study what what is missing here that we know 
millions of people will want and, and download and you know, executed, got it done. Where we've seen bigger backlash on things we blog about, uh, you know, I, I said already sort of Me Too apps. If you do apps that are already saturated in a category, you're not going to do as well. I mean, we've seen you know, some vaporware type apps hit before that never do well. And these are things we don't even want to touch, right? So anything that falls into that category, don't expect to get a lot of coverage for it. Um, and a tip here, you know, over the years, I've had a lot of developers reach out to me in advance and say, hey, Kevin, I'm working on an app. Do you think this is a good idea? They may or may not take my opinion, but it's been interesting and, and cool to see developers want that feedback because they know we're sort of right in the middle of it with our communities. Uh, they'll talk to our forum members, our, our you know, really active enthusiast members, and get feedback on the idea before it starts. Um, and, I mean, obviously, a lot of developers talk to other developers, too. I mean, it's a competitive space, but there's also a lot of camaraderie. You got word? it. I could not spell that, though. I don't know. It's, it's a tough word. That's why they build spell check. It's good. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, I mean, taking advantage of that is big, right? Build up your, uh, your core group. And we've seen a lot of uh, core groups of developers emerge. I mean, RIM is very proactively building this up now at a formal level. But before that, we even saw you know, BBM groups hit, where you have 20 or 30 developers on a BBM group. And they built their own support group and, and idea brainstorming group. And I think that's great, right, as, as you build that up. and. You're, Everybody's in it together. Uh, next thing, so development phase. You know, it doesn't matter how good your app is. If it launches full of bugs, you're going to get low ratings in app world, wherever. And um, it's not going to world. Go, in app world, that's what I mean. <laughs> and uh, well, I meant also like on the blog. When we blog it, it's going to get a bunch of negative comments, right? And it's it's not going to do as well. So making sure you you get beta testers and really make sure it works well is, is key. Um, and you can work with communities for this, right? So another thing, too, is wisdom from the BlackBerry Storm, compatibility across uh, as many devices as possible at launch. So one thing we saw when the Storm came out was developers were still building just for trackball, non-touchscreen devices. We would blog about that, and then every comment left on a post was, why can't I get it on my Storm at the time? Uh, so the developers who took the effort to make sure they had cross device compatibility, everybody loved them. They got better ratings in App World, better ratings everywhere because of that. Um, so that's important. So a couple things on this point. You know, here's an example, right? Uh, app comes out. It doesn't support OS 7. It has 24 comments saying, you know, why it wasn't available for OS 7, because that's what everybody wanted. Um, I think they fairly quickly came back and updated it, but they could have avoided that at the start, had a much better introduction into the world if they would have you know, worked a, a little bit longer to ensure that compatibility. And in terms of engaging with communities at this point, you know, we've done a few fun things over the years. I mean, we'll often run blog posts looking for beta testers. You know, a developer who's you know, putting a lot of time and energy into a big app, in this exa uh, into a new app. In this case, it was Fixmo. You know, they came and they wanted beta testers. And I think we got them like 5,000 beta testers uh, early. Uh, so those people, you know, we blogged it. They contacted him. He set it up. He got tons of great feedback. You know, Rick, Rick just kept saying how amazing the, the, the users were, because they didn't care if they even you know, bricked their phone with a bad beta build. It was enthusiast users who, who didn't care. They just wanted to be part of the process. And then as it came to market, you know, he built up a loyal relationship there. So he gave away free copies of the, of the app as a reward and thank you. But in the meantime, you know, anytime somebody blogged about it, if somebody had something bad to say, he didn't even have to touch it because there was 30 people who were beta testers there saying, this app's great, you're wrong about this. Like, he built a community of people who did all the work for him. It was really brilliant. And um, you know, to that extent, you know, our, on our site, you can actually get your own forum, like sub-forum within the forums to, to use the hub. Uh, you don't have to do that, but it's features that are there, and a lot of sites have that. So doing everything you can to get your app to market is huge uh, in a well-functioning way. Announcing your app, that's obviously the biggest thing, is you have your app, you want to get that out of the, out of the gate post. Uh, so often, we just see developers not doing anything here. You know, the developer pushes out a new app or update, and we're discovering it ourselves in app world, maybe the day it hits, or maybe two weeks later, or we see it, you know, some other site that was less lazy blogged it first, and then I'm yelling at Adam in the audience here, one of our writers, and it's, you know, what the hell, why didn't we get this coverage up on it? Um, so reach out to us, you know? Uh, sometimes developer announces um, 
yeah, pushes out updates, announces new new apps, and we're discovering it. We've or we've already blogged it. That's actually the thing that happens that drives me nuts. Is uh, you know we blog an app, two weeks later the developer reaches out and says, hey, do you think you could cover our app? And then <laughs> we send them the link back, and we're like, we already did. You know, where where were you on this? And then and then we get the reply saying, oh, that's why we got all the sales that day. They didn't even put two and two together. It's kind of funny. Uh, so obviously what we prefer is you know. Don't rely on us to find an app world. Even better, you know, you know when you submitted it, you know it's going to be coming out soon. Reach out to us. Give us a heads up that it's coming before it comes live. Uh, we'll see developers reach out to us in advance, so we can even do a bit of a preview on it. And uh, again, we already said, you know, we love when you, when you guys provide materials that make it easy on us. Actually, if you can if if you can do it right, if you know your timing very well for your app launch, and um, and you're working with uh, someone like Kevin or Crackberry. Um, one of our, uh, when we launched the MySpace app for BlackBerry, mm -hmm. so that was a long time ago. Um, <laughs> but uh, we had, uh, we were able to go out to media and say, we're going to launch this at midnight. And we sent a note to um, uh, maybe, I don't know, like 100 media outlets and said, we're going to launch this at midnight tonight. And at that point, it was, you know, maybe um, 10 in the morning. And so they started putting up um, posts about launching tonight at midnight. And um, at midnight, by noon the next day, we had 400,000 downloads. So yeah. it was good. It was a great build up demand and yep. drive it home. That's uh, great. Yeah. I don't know if that's on the roadmap, and I know we have Test Center, but that again puts it out publicly. Um, I, I, I'll, I can ask them. I don't know. So you almost mean based on a, like somebody's BBID or something, be able yeah. to push out. Yeah, it's a good you idea. could you could target. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I got we got to move quick and finish up. I got a, another meeting at two o'clock. Yes, you do. Uh, <laughs> Dan Dodge, we're talking. To. It's so exciting. <laughs> Uh, okay, so sneak peeks. You know, any developer who says, "Here's a heads up on an app; it's coming out next week. It's going to get posted, right?" So these guys did it. They got blogged. Not only that, it was coming. They got blogged again the day it hit because we got, you know, hey, exclusive. It's coming. We're excited. Uh, so that's just kind of common sense opportunity. The now available post is what I showed earlier. You know, send us in the quick blurb. Send us in screen caps. Go above and beyond with an awesome looking Photoshop image that matches, you know, sort of what we run on the sites or anybody you're reaching out to, and you make life that much easier. Uh, one thing here that's a key point is get engaged on site. So if, if uh, you know, Barry Review writes about your blog post, create an account. If anybody has comments, you know, re reply to them. Same thing with our site. Same thing with all sites. If you appear somewhere, don't be scared to like. Create an account, say you're the developer, and get engaged. People see that, and they're like, wow, these people really care. And uh, there's things you can do online to kind of you know, set up your, your media monitoring these days. And uh, even taking the lead in forum discussion. So we see a lot of developers who you know, they, they send us the app, we blog it, they go right to the forums, and they create a forum thread uh, in the community saying, you know, here's where you can report any bugs or anything like that. So they take control of the, the conversation right there, which is always huge. It goes such a long way. Um, often, you know, once an, once an app gets announced, there's going to be some bugs no matter how much beta testing you did. Uh, so we find an opportunity for devs is to, you know, email us with the change log when you do your 1.1 version update if you do. And again, here's something where, you know, we blogged it for Bellshare because they sent it in. And in this case, he put it on sale the same day he was doing his updates as a little thank you. So how are we not going to blog it? Uh, review time. You know, so once your app's kind of out there, reviewed, uh, been announced, it's got some initial downloads and feedback, you know, then we want to set up and do a more fully featured review. I think we have the developer in the audience who make, made this app. Jerome is right there. Uh, awesome, <laughs> awesome, right? <laughs> Building relationships. I see him. We know his name. We give him a free plug. Everybody should go get Black for their, their playbook. Done deal. Um, so then, yeah, full reviews take more effort and time on our part, but we love to do them. And, and if it's a great app, you know, it's on our list. Uh, there's lots of sites out there on the internet that do app reviews. If um, I'm really hoping one day Rim gets an affiliate program into App World, because then, you know, we're going to be running nothing but app reviews all day long because we can make money off of them too. So you know, again, it's it's trying to um, just take advantage of every opportunity out there. 
And another thing for reviews is if you've built up, you know, loyal beta testers and, and built those relationships with users of your app, they make the best reviewers beyond guys like us. Because we're doing it as part of our regular content process. But what we'll see is, you know, members in the forums who write awesome reviews of apps they've downloaded. And, and a lot of times there's, you know, a relationship that's been built up there. It's, it's a really loyal user of the app. Uh, keeping momentum going. So, I mean, this is basic sort of sales and promotion tactics, right? I mean, sell it, put it on sale, come up with ways to promote it. Um, there's always opportunities like that. You know, there's lots of interesting pricing models these days. So, you know, a few years ago, it was all about just sell it as much as you could at the start, lower your price over time. I, I always found developers who started low and tried to go up high. It never <laughs> worked as well. Um, you know, it's interesting because, I mean, my take personally still is if, whether it's 99 cents or it's seven dollars, it's really not a lot of money these days. Like it's a cup of coffee at Starbucks, and you know we've also often found that even if you start on the higher end pricing, you'll get a bunch of comments where people say, "Oh my God, you're charging too much money for your app," but then I talk to the developer afterwards, and they still sold a ton. And it's this weird backwards psychology where you know the people who don't want to spend money, they're very vocal saying this should be free or 99 cents, but then. You know, Victoria reads it, and she's like, well, I can afford $7, so I'm not going to complain about the price, and she buys it. So you can experiment in there a little. That's my personal take. If it doesn't work, don't, don't blame me. But, you know, <laughs> and, and these days there's obviously in-app upgrades and all these other things coming, so it's, uh, it's exciting times to try things. Ongoing promotion of your app, um, there's lots of ways. You can put it on sale. You know, guys like Tether here, they knew it was Crackberry's birthday coming up. You know, we didn't even email them. They emailed us, and they're like, hey, you know, we'll give you some devices to give away for your birthday contest, which we know you'll do because you did them the year before and the year before and the year before. So they, uh, they got lots of you know, free publicity. We rewarded our readership community. How can we not take advantage of that when, when it's somebody's reaching out to us being pro proactive like that? Uh, planned updates are newsworthy. So in this case, you know, Barry Weather 2.0 comes out. It's a big step change up. Uh, the developer gives us the change log and everything else, makes it easy on us to say what's new. Um, so that's great. And we see that they're, you know, this is a tip. I don't know what the rim take on this is, but a lot of developers I've talked to have told me they find there's value with AppWorld in doing sort of a steady stream of, of updates versus going, you know, six months and not. And, and I think the reason for that was just because you get put new. in the recently updated yeah. section. That's right. Um, so that's a clever tactic that, again, maybe a lot of people don't think about, but actually planning out your update schedule. And, and it even keeps the, you know, when you get the notification out of App World that, hey, there's an update available for your device, it's just a prompt to remind the person who already downloaded your app to use it again if they haven't for whatever reason or mention it again. Like, it's, it's kind of weird psychology, but it makes a lot of sense to just do steady updates. Uh, but big bang updates are good too. So you know, do your steady stream of updates, but every now and then plan out your big upgrade. If it's if it's that kind of app that has sort of a life cycle where you can add in more more updates, and then milestone milestones are newsworthy. And I think this is especially for Rim too. Yeah. You know, if you're successful on the platform, shout it out to everybody, and uh, they'll shout it back for you. Too. Yeah, we have a we have a success story program um, on uh, on our wide develop for BlackBerry on um, BlackBerry. Uh, developer.blackberry.com, and uh, we, we do a lot of work on taking those success stories and pitching them out as well. Yeah. And last two slides quick. So that's kind of the app life cycle. Hopefully that all made sense. Uh, moving into dealing with social media, which is, you know, hugely important today. It wasn't a few years ago, but now it is. Um, you know, always be monitoring. So again, I said that earlier, whether it's blogs or forums or anywhere on Google, be searching for your you know, your name of your apps all the time and seeing what people are saying. Be, maintain a presence, you know, be proactive, respond as needed. It's always better, we find, to engage users right where they're complaining or anything than, than to do it separately, because it shows you care at, at every instant if you do that. Uh, on Twitter, respond to tweets, and here again, Bell Share does a great job with it. So he's not out there tweeting about what he's eating for breakfast or anything like that. Uh, but when somebody tweets at him saying, you know, my, I need a new, code for my app, or this, I'm having this issue or this issue, he replies on the spot very quickly, he's monitoring it, you know, if he does sales or promos, he'll tweet them out there, uh, and in this case here, yeah, Rim did tweet him, you know, dev success at Bell Shares had more than 25 million combined downloads for their BlackBerry apps, uh, so that's huge, right, and just consistent effort, very consistent, timely effort. 
Uh, so Twitter's really important to monitor because it's, people are very vocal on it. Facebook is a little tricky for yourself. I, I haven't figured out, I mean, if you're building Facebook related apps, that's one thing, but if you're you know, a developer and you say, like our Facebook page and that, tell me if you've had a great success story there because you know, we're still sort of figuring out that. Uh, and YouTube is really interesting where you, know, you can do your own videos and if you have the skills or people who can do great videos, do it because it puts it out there and, and that's its own community of users. Uh, but even backwards, using the reviews that we do on our site in your, in your promotions. And this is an example um, where I actually did uh, a review on an Android app uh, when I was, I was trying out the competition for a little bit. Basically, I did this Euro Cup quick little wallpaper thing. Well, Adidas took it and stuck it in all their advertising. It took me two minutes, and it got 350,000 views coming back reporting on, on our sites, right? So I looked at it as a great opportunity where they you know, used our content that we provided uh, there was no dialogue in this case, but they just took advantage of it. And I was like, wow, that's awesome of Adidas. I was so excited. Um, and then we've seen other companies too, like here's Tether is the example in the bottom left corner, where if you visit their website, you know, they've put in all the accolades and quotes they've received from coverage, whether it's you know, New York Times, Crackberry, users, and they've really put the info back out there. So you need to remember that social connects both ways. Um, you, know, you, you can reuse what other people have said. And that's it, and I think our question time is really limited to nothing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we've got, um, uh, these are the email addresses for myself and my team on the bottom half. Um, and uh, again, feel free to reach out to us at more than that, please do. Is there a RIM page where they talk, you know, for developer PR, like on the BlackBerry site? No, there's not. We should do a good one, yeah. Just I checking. Any questions, super quick, because we got to get kicked out and we have a... Outside, okay. Outside for questions. No, no, that's no, cool. No, no, no problem. That's cool. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Hope that was helpful for a few of you. Yay.